Linux is not for everyone. And it's something that I need to come out and say because it'd be disingenuous to say, hey, 100% of the population can use Linux because that's not really the truth. And I don't think I've ever uh, really come out and just said that, which is kind of crazy because uh, I think it's easy to get caught up in how awesome Linux is, especially when you start you start to use and learn all the different things and facets of Linux. There's It's a very, very powerful operating system. But I wanted to make today's video about those that really shouldn't switch or maybe uh, can't switch because of certain limitations. So let's jump on the desktop. I'm actually going to cover Mac and Windows and then jump on Linux at the end here just to kind of showcase the differences between all three in which user you might be because you might be a Windows user or a Mac user and curious about Linux. But let's go ahead and touch on some of the things that are holding you back and uh, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. I want to, when you do try Linux, I want you to have um, a good impression of it and have a better understanding of what to expect. All right, so we're gonna start out with Windows. Everyone knows this is kind of what I grew up on. I was a Windows user for 20 plus years until about 2018 when, before I switched to Linux. Now with Windows, there's a bunch of programs. There's really two main software suites, which uh, I've already gone over in past videos, but Microsoft Office and Adobe. Those will not work on Linux. You can possibly emulate older ones and there's other things people have said but i've gone down all of these options i'm gonna tell you just no don't do it if you're huge you're stuck and have to have your office or you have to have your adobe stick on uh windows or switch to mac uh, which I'll, I'll show that in a minute because i do love both adobe and microsoft office actually better on mac than windows but that's not really one of the only things keeping people on windows and the next up is games. You see, I use game streaming to cast this right here. And actually, as I quit out, I'll show you how I do this. But um, I use Destiny 2, I think is the biggest game that I play on here, um, or Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Both those games I will actually uh, use on Windows. Uh, both are easy anti-cheat. Both don't work on Linux. Uh, and, you know, it's just one of those things, you know. It's uh, for 100% gaming compatibility, Windows is still king. And uh, I don't think there's any uh, issue with that. However, Linux has cropped up a lot. And I made a ton of videos about this. So uh, let's jump over to Linux really fast. And then I'll load up Mac here at the end, just as uh, another point of reference. So we'll go ahead and quit out of this. And you'll see I'm back here on Moonlight. Here's some of the, the Windows-only games like PUBG, Division 2, Fortnite, Apex. Uh, a couple other notable ones that aren't in my list here. League of Legends in 2021 will be Windows-only as their new anti-cheat software will not work on Linux or as we're told. Who knows what will happen between now and then. Right now, it does work on Linux. Um, but, you know, that's just a couple handful of games most of the games on Linux, when you pull up, like, let's say, Steam Library, which is where most people have the games, most of these do work. There's a couple standouts in here, like Doom Eternal, uh, because it has de novo DRM. It doesn't work natively through here. You can hack around and get it working <laughs> doing some shenanigans. But uh, I, I don't want to go into that too much today, as when it comes to gaming, if you need 100% of your library functional... Typically, that's what you want to use. And when it comes to third-party launchers, like Bethesda Launcher is a pretty nasty one to get working on Linux. And if you're not technically adept or you don't want to learn how to change a lot of the things in to get a game working and you just want it to install and play, most of the Steam-based games do that. Uh, even a lot of the games through what's called Lutris do that. But there's still some probably 10 to 20% out there that don't. And uh, I want to just point that out. So that kind of stinks when you're a hardcore gamer. For me, it's not a deal breaker, though. All right, now back over on the Mac now. 
I wanted to kind of just showcase this. I have Outlook installed. I have, I think, Adobe Acrobat Pro on here. A couple other ones. I like using those tools, even though they were actually originally made for Windows. It's just a little bit better. Uh, when it comes to Microsoft Office, even though you would think it would work better on Windows, it actually integrates and kind of is a little bit bulkier on Windows, um, where the Mac, it just works a little bit better and a little cleaner. Other things about Mac, uh, like iMovie and things from the App Store that I have pulled up here, uh, that will also cause some issues. Uh, as a Linux user in Mac, I actually use Terminal quite a bit and Homebrew and other things uh, to kind of empower some of the things of Mac so I don't have to use some of the App Stores. But I want to say for those that are thinking about Linux that are on Mac, it is a different beast and it does require a different skill set. So let's jump over onto Linux again and just kind of showcase what some of the alternatives are here. So as far as alternatives to what I've kind of gone over, when it comes to Microsoft Office, honestly, just pulling up your browser and using Office Online or Gmail or those types of things, the online email clients I like a lot better. I don't like the archaic look of a lot of the mail clients on Linux. So I found myself jumping in and just using webmail, which I know that rubs people, some, some people the wrong way. Uh, other things when it comes to alternatives, I love GIMP now. Uh, and I say now because this was a difficult software to learn coming from Photoshop. It, uh, I think for the first 60 days of Linux, I complained about not having Photoshop every day. And I even tried to emulate it, run it through Wine, even ran it through a VM a couple times. But in the end, I learned GIMP and I have my scripts in here where I can just immediately outline, put shadows in everything and it just kind of does all of my default settings so instead of selecting brush size and all the things that you normally do i set uh, script foo scripts up in gimp and once i did this and had scripts uh gimp became kind of my best friend to where now i use it even if i was on not even in linux so uh cool little alternative but not for everyone and there are other projects i would recommend uh, because it was really, this is probably the toughest transition I had going from Windows to Linux. I would say there's a project to make GIMP look more like Photoshop and act a lot more like it. I highly recommend you check that out. Um, I'll try to put a link in the description. If not, I think it's a GIMP shop or something like that. I can't remember the exact project name, but check the comments. Next up, when it comes to video editing, I've already touched on Max iMovie and also in Windows, a lot of people use Premiere. And uh, there's also DaVinci Resolve, which actually has a Linux client, albeit not as good as probably the Mac or Windows counterpart, as I have had more issues with DaVinci Resolve and Linux than the other two operating systems. But I don't really like any of these. I love Caden Live. Caden Live is what I edit all my videos on. I've edited uh, probably around a thousand videos in it now. And I just am never going to switch. I'm sorry, but I'm never going to color color grade. I'm never going to do any of that stuff. So I, I want to just say switching from a lot of the traditional video editors to more of the free and open software of Linux when it comes to GIMP and, and Caden Live, this was a challenge. But once I did it, I just could never see myself going back, which is kind of a weird thing to say as all the software in Linux is free compared to, you know, I think iMovie's $300, Premiere, um, probably some kind of subscription basis where Adobe's just bending you over every month. But um, I love this two things. So if I had to pick one editor to use after this, uh, I would probably pick DaVinci Resolve. I've, I used that a little bit uh, a month or two ago, and it was good, but I still like Caden Live better, <laughs> which is funny. And uh, I hate Lightworks. I tried Lightworks a while back and I never liked that. But needless to say, this is just kind of demonstrate some of the software between Windows, Mac and Linux and where that's at. Uh, as far as browsers, using Discord, a lot of the other functionality of softwares, it's usually here on Linux. Everything's kind of moved to a software as a service model to where if you just open up a browser, 
there you go. You can easily uh, do a software as a service through here. So having like applications run in the background, usually not that big of a deal these days where most people can get by or there's already a Linux counterpart to it. So this isn't nearly as a hang up, as much of a hang up as you think. Uh, but I wanted to just kind of overview that to see where you stand. And I want to give you some final thoughts here. So when I say Linux is not for everyone, I literally didn't think it was for me for the longest time. I was a 20 years Windows user, and it took me a long time to really understand it. But there's a couple misconceptions, and sometimes people say this in the Linux community, and I just don't think they understand where a Windows or a Mac user is coming from. And that's simply, Linux works differently than both Mac and Windows. And if you are so familiar with Windows over the course of 10 or 20 years, it's going to be very difficult for you to transition some of those habits over to Linux. And some things about Linux scare users, such as the terminal. Now, uh, using like Linux Mint Cinnamon, my, probably my most recommended for anybody switching, made a whole playlist of videos helping people transition. Um, I realized that there's sometimes where you're going to have to pull up terminal and terminal can scare people. But I would just tell you this. If you learn not to be scared of it, you'll love it and you'll use it everywhere. You'll use it in windows in windows. I use PowerShell a lot, even the new windows terminal application I've installed. And I use it on occasion just to do some bash commands and things like that in windows. And then on Mac, uh, I don't like it's built in terminal app. I'd recommend iTerm too. So that's what I use on Mac when it comes to terminal, but terminal is one of those things that just unleashes your power as a user. So if you're thinking about Linux, I would probably get a little more comfortable with using like a PowerShell in Windows or even uh, iTerm if you're in, in Mac and using Terminal a little more because some of these are really nice and they really help make your life a lot easier, especially when it comes to package managers, which Linux is based around, uh, which if you're not familiar with the package manager, basically just imagine typing one line, probably about four words in and just having it download the program, install the program and put it all the shortcuts and everything in without you having to do anything other than type four words and press enter. So that's the power of terminal, but it is definitely scary to some new users. So to end this out, the people Linux is not for is really that intermediate user that's been using Windows or Mac for 10 plus years, over a decade. And those are the people that have their software suites that might be specific to that operating system that they know like the back of their hand in transitioning from that to a Linux counterpart or a, a FOSS alternative, a free and open source alternative in Linux is uh, too much for them. And I get that. that, that person should not use Linux if they're not willing to make that transition. And uh, that's why I was like, hey, it's disingenuous for anyone to say, hey, everyone can use Linux because I get that it's not for everybody. And I've probably gotten overzealous in the past and told people that. So this video is just kind of set that, set it straight. Um, I love Linux. I think everyone should at least try it or know more about it. Install it on a virtual machine, test it out. It's kind of a fun operating system. One that uh, I would say if I had to pick one thing about Linux to tell people is everything's changeable. You don't like the file manager, change it. You don't like the way it looks, change it. You don't like anything about it. Everything's customizable distributions and all that. Um, a lot of people hop between them just before they understand what comprises of it and they figure out, oh, I don't actually need to reinstall it every time. I can actually just change these components out. And uh, it's just so modular. I, I, I just love it. Uh, but I wanted to make this video to say, hey, here's a counterpoint. It's not for everybody. You need to learn some stuff and uh, don't be afraid of terminal because honestly, I couldn't recommend it to anybody uh, other than maybe an old lady that's not computer savvy. So there's some caveats to what I'm saying here. If it's somebody that just uses a web browser like your grandma or your mom, that's uh, just not very computer friendly, installing Linux and just saying, hey, here you go. 
here's a browser. It's never going to get a virus. It's <laughs> or very rarely. They'd have to do a lot to get a virus. But let's just say it's going to be far more stable and reliable for them using a Linux browser. And if they're not a power user or an intermediate user, really, it's going to be a very easy transition for them. And they're probably going to like it a lot better than if you had uh, Windows or even Mac for that matter. So with that, let me know in the comments. Be gentle. I understand a lot of people that might ruffle their feathers me saying it's not for everybody, but uh, it's the truth. And I don't want to be disingenuous and say it is. So with that, again, let me know your thoughts and a big shout out to all ChrisTitus.com members. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.